Hi, and welcome to the Go to Grow podcast with your fellow nature lovers at orchardsnearme.com. Every week we share a passion for living life outdoors. Whether it's easy mindful exercises or foraging for the foods we love, we will share all of our experiences with you. And we hope that you are inspired to create your own journey along the way. This week I'm going to talk a little bit about climate change and the future of food. How will we cope with the scarcity of food in the future if we don't learn about the sources of food today? There is an alarming amount of coverage about the adverse effects of climate change on our ecosystem. However, now isn't the time to panic, it's the time to plan and make some food choices that will help us to better understand the foods around us. A series of freak climate events in the 1870s caused a global drought that resulted in the death of millions of people. In India, it was known as the Great Famine. The most significant climate event was El Nino of 1877, where warm waters released heat into the air, creating storms. In addition to the Indian Ocean, the Pacific and the Atlantic recorded higher temperatures than normal. Today, we rarely find famines in the developed world. The majority of famines hit places where organisations cannot enter and trade issues are hurting local people. However, with all of these climate unknowns in front of us, we must be prepared to take action in the case of a climate crisis. Eating local and community supported agriculture, known as CSAs, have become trendy in recent years. We hear about many people adopting sustainable agricultural practices and promoting community food initiatives. They are not just farming enthusiasts, but socially engaged individuals who enjoy spending time outdoors and learning about the land around them. A few examples to look up include Juniper Hill Farms and Moy Hill Farms here in Ireland. These farming communities should be admired for their innovative approach to farming. They also encourage the sharing of knowledge, which we love here at Orchards near me. However, there are other opportunities if we decide to broaden our knowledge base and look at the traditional farming methods of our nearby regions. It could be just as beneficial to learn about the foods coming from nearby resources. For example, in Europe we have many different climates that lead to the production of a wide variety of food species. In a time of crisis, wouldn't it be great to know what foods could your neighbours offer as a substitute if you run out? We believe this is all about immersive farming education and understanding the role of nature in the production of food. For years, chefs from around the world, often privileged and guys that are striving for their next Michelin star, love to travel to learn about other food cultures. We think the general public can also get in on this interesting pastime. Learning about the ancient art of crushing grapes in France or discovering why beekeeping is a national tradition in Slovenia makes food much more interesting. It helps us to learn about the food cultures around us. Food is closely linked with the weather and geography of a region or country. Traditional dishes often reflect the mood associated with the climate. The proximity to the wild Atlantic coast makes Portugal heaven for fish lovers, and the cultivation of fruits and olives makes Greece a mecca for salad eaters. If we begin to understand the landscapes around us and how they are affected by the climate, we can better educate ourselves in food production and regain knowledge of how our ancestors used wild plants and integrated them into their local dishes. Although large corporations have successfully harvested key ingredients for human consumption and distributed major crops around the world, it is also worth knowing about the lesser known and lesser used crops that can act as substitutes if the time comes when we need them to. This is one of the reasons why we encourage foraging and learning about the wild plants around you. There is enough food to feed the masses as long as we teach ourselves about the food sources available to us and retrain our palates so that we can adapt dishes to include some wild flavours. This is just a short rant about food in the future and how foraging for foods may help us to better understand locally sourced produce and plants that flourish the wild. For more food rants and foraging adventures, you can get in touch with us anytime at info at We hope to see you on a foodie adventure soon. Thank you.